Well, with the parts of the coolant pump clean, uh, it's time to get it put back together. I'll get started with the coolant relief plunger and the spring. You might recall that the spring that came originally in this pump was rusted really badly and as I was taking it out I had to break it in order to remove it. I had put out a posting on one of the online forums about the need for a spring or at least the dimensions off of the original and one of the members stepped up and sent me not only a new spring but he sent me the entire pump out of his old mill. So not only did I get a new spring but I also got a pickup strainer which was deteriorated to the point of disintegration on this one. This relief plunger is actually a pretty critical component of the pump. If the pump is engaged it is always turning when the spindle is turning. But if for whatever reason the valve to the work area is turned off that pressure needs to go somewhere and the only place it can go is back into the pump. Hopefully you can see this on camera. I push on that plunger with a screwdriver. Essentially when the pressure builds up in the upper pipes toward the work area and that valve is off, that pressure causes the plunger to push back against the spring, opening up that cavity back down into the coolant sump, alleviating the pressure built up in those lines. There are no gaskets that go between any of the components on this pump, including this pump body. But I did see on Steve Summers' YouTube channel where he was rebuilding the pump for his 2H that he used just generic grease sort of as a sealer between the mating surfaces. With a little bit of grease on the bearing surfaces, uh, I can now take the pump body and made it with the cover using these locating pins and some filister head screws. Next is the cover plate. Uh, again, I'll use some grease on the bearing surfaces as well as the mating surfaces and anywhere the drive gears will mesh. This first gear that I'm placing into the cover plate is the driving gear. It's connected to the power takeoff when the coolant pump is engaged. And then I can place the driven gear onto the shaft that comes from one of the two pump gears that's already been installed in the pump body. And then I can line up the cover plate with the locating pins and then fasten it with some filister head screws. Turning my attention now to the check valve and the check valve cover. During normal operation when the valves are open, this check valve will open up and allow coolant to come through the pump, up through the piping, and then to the work area. But then when the pump is disengaged, this check valve would close and it should seal off the pump from any of the coolant that's still up in the pipes that lead to the work area. My thought is that this keeps the coolant pump somewhat primed 
so that the next time you engage the coolant pump, it you don't have to wait for that coolant to reach the tool. But I'm not 100% sure on that. If this is something you may know a little bit more about, I'd appreciate maybe uh, leaving a comment. Let me know what the real purpose is behind this check valve. With the check valve installed, I'll again put some grease on the mating surfaces and use some more Philister head screws to fasten this to the pump cover. I was tempted to use Permatex on all these mating surfaces. I suppose if the pump starts to leak, I can revisit this. It's not too hard to get to. There's a pin that gets driven horizontally into the shaft of the driving uh, gear on the pump. This is what engages with the power takeoff on the mill itself. The last piece to go on here is the pickup tube and strainer. This is the strainer that came on the pump that was given to me by a machinist's forum member. Even though this is likely completely unnecessary, I'm going to use some Permatex high tech on the underside of the pump cover before I install it. This just gives me a little bit of extra protection, I guess, from any potential for leaks. Well, that's going to be it for this video. I didn't want to try to jam too much into a single video, so we'll keep this one short with just the coolant pump assembly and install. I hope you enjoyed it, and if you did, give it a thumbs up. And if you're not a subscriber, I'd hope you consider hitting that subscribe button. And don't forget to smash that bell icon so you'll be notified the next time I post a video. And thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one.